ओके जमील साहब वी आर नाउ लाइव एंड वी आर स्ट्रीमिंग लाइव ऑन फेसबुक आल्सो आई थिंक वी कैन स्टार्ट ओके जस्ट अस्सलाम वालेकुम टू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स हु हैव जॉइंड अस टुडे फॉर दिस मेंटल हेल्थ सीरीज एज अ पार्ट ऑफ आवर समर आउटरीच 2020 वी हैव हैड प्रीवियसली टू सेशंस रिलेटेड टू मेंटल हेल्थ सीरीज टुडे वी विल बी टॉकिंग ऑन adolescent mental health we are joined by mr mohammad akmal shah guys mental health mr mohammad akmal shah is a clinical psych is everything okay jamil sir yeah uh, uh, you said uh, adolescent mental health so is it, it it is child mental health child mental health. okay sorry sorry just yes, okay sir. so we we uh, dear uh, viewers we are uh, joined uh, uh, by mr mohammad akmal shah mr mohammad akmal shah is a clinical psychologist he he is an international affiliate member of american psychological association today as a part of our mental health series we will be discussing uh, child mental health uh, for this session we are joined by dr jamil uh, khan dr jamil khan will moderate this session this session is a part of our, our uh, mental health series which we have been doing uh, since last uh, two weeks this is our third session uh, uh, th this we are doing as a part of a part of our summer outreach 2020 uh, jamil will do the uh, will, will will do the mod moderation for this session and uh, uh, mr mohammad akmal shah will be live with us on our zoom platform and facebook platform for around one and a half hour for our participants who are viewing uh, who have joined us uh, uh, on zoom and for those who are, who are who are watching our session live on facebook if you have any questions uh, related to child uh, mental health uh, and related stuff please feel free to ask us uh, on zoom platform also and you can ask our, uh, these questions on facebook live session also uh, jamil sahab uh, please go ahead introduce the speaker and uh, moderate the session thank you so much uh, thank you uh dr khalid thank you very much for uh you know kind of giving an introduction about what is going to happen over here uh so speaking about uh, uh today's session which is a part of uh about mental health and and particularly we'll be talking about the child mental health uh this session is particularly very uh very important for all of us because uh as a as a person with who uh, i'm not quite well versed with the subject uh, but then there are three important aspects which i feel is very important for audience to understand uh, as audience are building up i'm i'm kind of giving uh, a two minute uh, i just want to have a two minute of you know the things which i understand from this child mental health is that the parents who are presently parents having the children it's very important for them to uh, listen to the series it's important for the people who will who are going to become the parents in future and third most important is the self introspection of some of the things which has somehow built in us in that when we were child and then uh, over the over the period of time it you know uh, it it has kind of created a sort of vicious cycle in us which we never understood and this session again will uh, you know enlighten us uh if there are some symptoms if there, there are some some phobias which are in us and we, we are not able to understand it uh particularly which i uh, the most important point which i want to emphasize over over here is uh because why i'm saying all this is because to, there are people who have prejudice uh of not listening to the psychiatrist or the psychologist because uh, most of us which have been you know uh, found all over the world that the people who uh, actually follow the islam kind of are uh, divergent i'm not talking you know i don't want to bring the religious issue here but to give a very important point about uh, the uh, islamic aspect and the psychology is that the first psychiatric hospital which was built in iraq was established by al razi who is a muslim who is one of the great islamic physician so uh among other factors this uh you know this factor also should uh, take us take our prejudices aside and we should be ready to unlearn the things and be you know uh, ready to open heartedly open heartedly understand everything so uh, uh today uh, with us is mr mohammad akmal shah who is a licensed clinical psychologist who is presently pursuing his phd from branchi institute of neuropsychiatry and allied sciences 
He has worked in, in, repu in reputed international NGOs as psychotherapist and clinical psychologist. We are very happy and we're privileged to have Mr. Mohammed Akmal Shah with us. And to start this session, there's a basic understanding and basic thing which, which everyone, you know, uh, kind of want to understand from you, Mr. Shah is, that, is there something mental health in children? Thank you, Dr. Jamil Khan Saab. Uh, Assalamu alaikum to everyone who is there on live on Zoom or Facebook. Yeah, when you talk about mental health in children, uh, we, we usually talk about different aspects of their behaviors and uh, we talk about their developmental stage, we talk about their emotional milestones, we talk about different day to day life activities as well. So when we talk about childhood mental health, it means we talk about how, ch how children are actually reaching to those developmental milestones and emotional milestones and how they are learning those healthy social skills and how to cope with day-to-day -day life problems. That's the whole aspect of it when we talk about childhood mental health. Usually we see that we call that, uh, that uh, yeah, there is a concept as you have questioned about that. Is there any concept about childhood mental health? Yeah, that is there. That's true. And, uh, uh, but we, uh, I especially talk about the community here in our valley. Uh, we, we usually ignore that because we don't know about the field very much. Parents are not able to understand how their children are behaving, why they are behaving in that way. Uh, they are not educated about these things. We have never taught in schools or colleges about these things. We have never been actually um, before marriage or something. We never have attended any lectures about how the parental issues are, what, what, how should we do, deal with our children. What, what should we do? What are the do's and do's to deal with, their, with our children? It's really uh, unfortunate we don't have any kind of lessons. Though if you, ask, if you see in, uh, in other countries, like um, in India, in other, some Indian states as well, I have seen there are particular classes, lectures for parents, how to go, uh, uh, go with your life after marriage, because it's a totally different experience. It's not about child only. It's about the whole parent after uh, you have you have the you, you are uh, you are uh, in the, in the process of marrying someone and after that how life will go that's the different totally different thing. So having knowledge about that thing, having knowledge about uh, how to deal with all those things, uh, that key uh, that that makes things easy easy for people. But if you if you are ignorant, if you are not able to. Uh, uh, see how the things are going. If you are not able to see how things will go in future, because uh, the things are the, the the problem with us is that we we are like we are have been brought up the way we are dealing with our uh, future life as well. So we, we don't take it necessary that we there is something something in it that we need to learn or do something about that. So when we talk about childhood mental health. Uh, definitely, there is there is a concept of childhood mental health. We have different different disorders. We will go with those uh, disorders as well. But uh, I want to make it clear here that I, uh, as a professional, I don't want to go into the deep psychopathology of childhood disorders, because I I want to uh, make it clear here with the listeners who who are actually uh, on Zoom and Facebook. Uh, uh, I want to make it clear that we, we sometimes what we do, uh, uh, we make things so compli complicated for us that we are not able to deal with, uh, with those kind of problems in the later stage. So I want to uh, make, it, make this session as uh, like uh, uh, how the things are going in your life, uh, how day-to-day -day life affects the children of uh, ch ch our children. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the thing which I, I must emphasize that. Uh, we will talk about the how we will we will discuss about the psychopathology as well we will discuss where there is necessary so we have some disorders which need to be discussed especially so uh, but but i want to deal with the day to day and and the present circumstances the, what what we are like in present at present what we are how we are dealing with with uh, children 
so that needs to be discussed as well because of the covid situation and all those things uh, as 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 uh, you know uh, people actually believe uh, in especially in kashmir if i say in that scenario that if you fulfill all the basic necessities of a child mm. that is you know put good clothes on the child make them you know eat good food and uh, you know have all the amenities with them you know in terms of the uh, toys and other things if i if i will be very you know if i say the child as in child we you know toddlers and the ch- children who you know who grow up and give them you know kind of cars or the bikes uh, but these are with this basic necessities also the child can suffer mental health conditions is it fact i mean how is it to, i mean how does it make sense to uh, the people like i am giving all the amenities and how does a ch- child go into this uh, kind of situation so uh, see uh, that's uh, not the question you are providing everything to your child and uh, he cannot develop psychological problems or something like that it's not true uh those people who have everything available those people who uh, those children who have everything available the parents who make available everything for children they also develop some kind of issues so it's not only that uh, you uh, give the ba- basic amenities basic facilities that we call that the uh, basic uh, needs um, you mean uh, so uh, like uh, we have the some uh, basic survival needs like we should have the shelter food clothing medical care or protection for our children and uh, besides that we have some other needs as well we call uh, them uh, like the emotional needs that that's must we need we need to address those emotional needs as well so it's must that we have there are various types of emotional needs that that need to be addressed that need to be taken care of when we talk about the child's uh, uh, mental health actually so there are the need to feel feel, feel important so need to feel important is one of the most important thing when we deal with the children need to feel important is like like uh, uh, children have this kind of a desire always of uh, uh, of giving importance to themselves in front of their parents so uh, so it's like a, uh, so that's why we see sometimes that attention seeking kind of a behavior Uh, so uh, if they are uh, ignored or if they are uh, not dealt with a certain kind of uh, what they actually want how they actually want so uh, it's uh, sometimes what happens they 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 create those kinds of behaviors where they need our attention um, towards him or her so it's very much important that we should uh, have this concept in mind that there is always a need to feel important in a child we should respect that need we should fulfill that need and we should uh, actually uh, make a kind of a balance in that need as well uh, so it, especially when the when this condition arises when the when the parents are having multiple children so how yeah. how can they balance at that point of time is also yeah that that's important that's why i was um, when we started i th- I, I, i already said that we should have the, the, those kind of learning classes for parents as well uh, the, the, the how how that developmental psychology is a kind of uh, is a totally different field which actually gives you insight about how how to deal with children what are the different different areas you need to take care of when you to, uh, deal with the children so it's important to have those uh, kinds of experience it's important to learn those kinds of things uh, uh, how to deal with those kinds of children so i'm talking about here need to feel that's one of the important need and second we have the need to feel included sometimes we do uh, sometimes we do things certain kind of things that feel that uh, children our children feel sometimes that we are excluded we are not included in included in that so it's very much important especially when you are dealing with their lives when you are dealing with their choices okay that, that's very much important so uh, need to uh, need to feel included is one of the most important thing and um, uh, it's very much important we should ask them we should ask children about what they like we should ask children about their their uh, wants and if you feel uh, that uh, if you feel good uh, f- for them it's actually true if you feel good for your children uh, as a parent they that, that will be the uh, reverse will be the totally true they will also feel good for you so that's actually the thing that we need to take uh, these uh, things into consideration as well 
and then the third is third need we we will discuss here is the need to feel accepted uh, need to feel accepted is also one of the most important thing so uh, if you have three or four children uh, it should not look like that you are giving importance to one and uh, you are ignoring the other uh, that's why keeping a balance is most important thing so, uh, uh, so, uh, so children should not feel a kind of uh, that they are excluded or they are not accepted in the family. They, they have, if especially those children who have some kind of issues, who have issues with your mental health, who have issues with your some other kinds of problems, have uh, like like uh, there are different different kinds of uh, disabilities. We know about like learning disability. We have ADHD. We have other forms of like um, autism spectrum disorders and all all those things. So. If, if the if the child is all, already suffering from those kinds of uh, issues and uh, feeling of uh, there's a there's an uh, uh, there's a kind of uh, that uh, accept acceptance if if there is not acceptance from the parents then that will create more problem later so then there is another need we call it the need for to feel secure that's that's also the most important thing need to feel secure uh, is one of the important thing because you need to as a parent you need to uh, you need to make them make children understand that you are there for them you are there every time you feel uh, you you need to uh, give them this kind of a notion that if you are in a problem we are here to help you we are here to take out you from th that kind of a problem so it's important we should let them solve problem and make decisions as well but uh, it's also important that we should mm, make that kind of a link a connection that they should not feel ignored they should not feel that they are lonely in dealing with this kind of a problem so besides those uh, basic survival needs we have some needs that are very much important we call them emotional needs for children like we talked about how it's important uh, need uh, need uh, to feel important and need to feel included accepted and then need to feel uh, secure these things we must Take. So when we talk about how to do these things, we cannot discuss it in 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 a, in a way here because that's too much big topic. How to so because I I I uh, I I'm giving this message to the parents that you should consult every time if you have this kind of a kid at home, you should consult a psychologist, a psychiatrist, or any mental health professional who is actually dealing with these kinds of cases on daily basis and who are experts in these in these things. So you need to get advice from them and you need to educate yourself how to deal with these kinds of things. Yeah. So in, in that in that condition, uh, it becomes very important to ask that what are the common problems, uh, you know, faced by the children or shown by the children, which are overlooked by the parents? If we talk about the common problems, uh, we we have different different problems. We have different mental health issues. We have different. Uh, so uh, we we I, I talk about that first. That uh, we we will not go into the deep psychopathology of the children. So we will do. We will see how the common daily life problems create more big problems in future. That that actually creates problems in future in such a way that you 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 have to label them as a kind of a psychological problems or psychological disorders so that because it starts from small small things but later in your later life you are not able to uh, uh, see them as a small problem or a problem which is which don't need a kind of attention or a, uh, or, a or a kind of uh, medical help um, but we we usually see them later stage in our life in their lives we see later in at a later stage we see them as big psychological problems so we know we know uh, that bringing up children is difficult it's not an easy task and uh, parents feel a lot of pressure sometimes especially when parents are in job or when there's a single parent or something like that but we usually see the problems like uh, one of the important thing which i want to discuss here the, which which is actually the day to day life problem we see in parents when they deal with their children is overprotectiveness that overprotectiveness is actually that creates more problem in later life the, we see there are always uh, some things that need to be tightly watched that's important we need to watch certain things tightly around lives of our kids, but shielding uh, shielding child 
from every possible inconvenience is actually creating more and more problems. So uh, giving a kind of freedom as a teenager is key to, key to, for, uh, key to explore many, many things in, in, in his daily life. If we are not giving him that kind of free environment, if we are not giving him that kind of, a, uh, that kind of a, um, a freedom which he actually needs, that will create a kind of a protective environment and that will make him more uh, anxious in, in his daily life and that will create more problems in later life you know parenting is all about uh, balance you you should know that thing and those parents who are actually watching us right now they should know it's everything about balance but one of the important question is here parents should know how to Parents should know how to balance that. So, and uh, overprotectiveness is one of the uh, daily life factor which actually contributes a lot in in making mental health worse in the later stage uh, of the ch of these children. So then there is another factor which we call refusing, like refusing to admit when when they are wrong. We usually see uh, in our valley we see this more often than uh, that. Uh, parents are refusing sometimes if if uh, children are not actually if children are not actually uh, if children have done something wrong in front of others they they refuse to accept that they have done something wrong but it can have negative impact on children you should know that that uh, talking with children about their mistakes or accepting their mistakes in front of others example relatives teachers siblings etc etc uh, makes them realize things and they mend their ways next time. If we are not able to, if we are actually hiding their mistakes, the next time there will be a more mistake and there will be a kind of blender, maybe next next time, there will be kind of this kind of behavior goes on and on and on. That creates more problem in the uh, because they actually, uh, in, in, in during childhood, the behaviors which are being accepted as a, uh, in, a in a family environment uh, makes more strong behaviors in future so these these important things we should we should know that children usually know their parents very well and uh, they accept that that they accept they're in uh, they're accepting their parents as a, as a parent and children may lose more respect for parents if they are not doing that kind of uh, that kind of behavior all, all the time so uh, so it's actually uh, these uh, types of behaviors usually make more problems you create more problems in daily lives and later stage it creates more problems when we think of the mental health issues in children so there's a third thing which i want to discuss here we sometimes nowadays our children are actually they are connected with Facebook, they're connected with Google everywhere and they, they, they have certain questions in their minds and uh, they ask sometimes these questions and um, that we, we, uh, we give wrong answers to their tricky questions sometimes if we don't know. We, we keep uh, uh, ourselves in that situations that like uh, if we are not knowing, but we, we, should, we, we make up the answer and we give the, those answers to them. So it's not necessary to do that. Uh, it, it, it creates confusion sometimes uh, among children. Uh, and and uh, if parents don't know that uh, uh, the way they are doing, how to do that, how to do it, it's just fine. If you, are, you have a problem, if you have this kind of, if you don't know about the fact, if you don't know, but you, you must see this thing that you should, uh, you should make this thing clear to a child, how to, how to get answer to this question. If you make these things clear, how to, uh, how to make sure, make yourself understood about that question? What's the real answer about that? So it, it won't be like uh, difficult uh, for them next time to uh, uh, to make answers available for their uh, maybe unique questions or something like that, or tricky questions. So it's very much important that we should talk about these things. It's uh, these are the mistakes we do in our daily lives. But these, if, if they, these mistakes are going on and on and on in, in, in their lives, so later stage, it creates more problem. And this, this ended up, this ends up in like having a kind of psychological or mental health issue in a later stage. So we, uh, we sometimes have uh, like problems with children. Like we don't, uh, we, we say sometimes that there's a kind of depression in childhood. 
uh, some people accept that or some people don't accept that that's uh, that's also a kind of uh, that notion we should we should have the knowledge about that as well it's right that most people think of depression as an adult illness sometimes but uh, children and adolescents can develop depression as well that's that's true so it's uh, like we have those kinds of we, we should know about the symptoms we should know about the 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 uh, onset and we should know about the precipitating factors what are the factors actually responsible for that uh, that uh, depression or that uh, stress or anxiety whatever it is so that that should be discussed that should be that about uh, what what happens in the daily lives of a children what happens that should be discussed with the parents the parents Absolutely. should make a pick parents should make uh, this uh, possible that they should get time out of their own schedule and they should discuss things with their parents as well that's how yeah yeah there are the, uh, we'll discuss these like there are few uh, depressions or adhd and other things we we'll, mm. uh, in in, a, in short while we'll discuss about it so i want to go one step back and uh, ask you that when we talk about the overproductiveness of the mm. child so there is a condition in that what, what is go- going to happen is uh, that a child who goes to the school and he is getting bullied or in the school mm. and when he is overprotected in the at the home condition so uh, how does a parent try to you know bring up this condition no, you are being bullied because a child does not say this as bullying he also feels scared to talk to the child we have a very you know a very broad gap in kashmir between children and the parents so uh, this this session is i i know it's a summary of everything but then uh, what do you what do you, what, what is your uh, take on uh, the bullying of ch- children in the school and how does how will how should it ch- you know uh, the a child a, a parent will come to the children and ask about it so when we talk about the certain behaviors uh, other children are doing with 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 the, with the children who is actually suffering maybe like bullying kind of a behavior is there so uh, when we talk about these things we should know that whenever a child is suffering from that kind of a behavior he shows symptoms about that at home at home or wherever he is so those symptoms those behaviors like uh, he may not tell to his parents he may not tell to his teachers uh, that i am being bullied I, uh, there's other children are not uh, doing well with me they are not uh, uh, they are not uh, friendly with me or something like that but uh, he will show that kind of anxiousness there will be kind of those symptoms those irritability will be there there will be uh, like uh, anger may be shown most of the time and uh, he may he may uh, not uh, um, uh, get into the class every uh, every time when it's needed or he may come back from the school or something like that because of the fear that he may be bleed there so this think uh, the parents if they are seeing these kinds of things that uh, that, that ch- a child is showing these kinds of behaviors they should know it and they should uh, they should talk about it that's very much important they should know how how the behavioral changes are taking place in a child so there are some key warning signs which 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 are actually which need to be addressed at that time so uh, parents must uh, do one thing that they they should uh, they should keep themselves informed about the children how he is going in his daily life they they should not take it for, for granted that if he is not eating today and we will not ask him how, why 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 there is no appetite why why he is not feeling like eating so uh, so we should know uh, the, he may he may not sleep throughout the night he may become irrit- irritating on uh, uh, very often he may he may show those kinds of anger outbursts maybe sometimes so these behaviors usually uh, show us that there is something some problem going on with this children so if he is not actually showing these behaviors before so so uh, that that should be taken into consideration that what was his behavior before uh, before this kind of uh, if he has he is showing now these kinds of behaviors right now so the whenever there is this kind of a situation uh, children needs to be taken into confidence yeah there should be a kind of link between parents and children on daily basis and there should be a kind of um, that uh, um, uh, discussio uh, discussion kind of a thing should be uh, t- uh, taken place at home as well and when parents come to know about this thing that there is this problem 
called bling they should take this thing to the school teacher as well and they should keep uh, school teachers uh, informed as well about this thing because it's it's not a one person task that if, 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 if there's a psychologist or a psychiatrist or any kind of a mental health professional he will he will correct these all things it's not possible there is always a teamwork needed in this thing there might be a psychologist uh, consultation ne needed there might be uh, parents needed in this uh, treatment plan there might be uh, the uh, teachers uh, as well needed in this plan even as friends some of the friends as well who who are actually uh, uh, studying in with this child so it's very much important we should take notes of these behaviors on daily basis that's my most important thing absolutely uh, uh, in that in that uh, you know uh, one of the symptom which a child usually shows is that the child does not pay attention to what is being asked by their parents or the uh, teachers itself so it is at the both stage as you said it's a teamwork so what does this mean to a uh, to a parent when the child is you know extremely uh, you know not showing any any attention to what is being told to him yeah see sometimes we see these things that uh how child if he's bullied or he's suffering from any other kind of mental health issue or there is a depression anxiety or some other kind of psychological disturbance is there which he is not able to uh, tackle himself so uh, there might be those kinds of attention deficit kind of uh, behaviors so he's not he might not be paying attention to his parents teachers in school or with friends he might be kind of that uh, that uh, he's not actually uh, um, what we call that he's not actually in his own senses maybe sometimes so at that time we should know that uh, uh, the the uh, this problem should needs to be addressed this problem needs to be addressed and there are certain kinds of uh, attention seeking like uh, attention improving uh, techniques as well so uh, there are some kind of uh, behavior therapies for that as well so how we can actually address the basic issue behind that attention deficit so if we are able to uh, address that basic issue which actually is kind of a precipitating factor where from that problem actually originated cause uh, where, where, where the cause lies actually so we can actually address that cause and we can see later the the uh, the attention which uh, on the daily uh, daily basis the attention may be improved in on a later stage that needs to be uh, that's important you, you need a psychologist or psychiatrist here who actually intervene uh, there there might be some family intervention as well uh, what they need need to do at home there might be some uh, some other interventions like behavioral modifications as well because of the, uh, the problem he has actually faced we need to address that problem as well we need to talk about that problem as well and uh, there might be some other kinds of techniques which we professionally use in, in in attention deficit like those kinds of things so it's very much important that we we always say that when we identify the problem that is the we almost say this thing that that 50% of problem is actually getting treated identification is the most important thing that's why we we actually emphasize on things that parents cause problems the children are facing in in daily lives that must be that those problems the education should be given to the parents about those key warning signs what are the key warning signs in different different kinds of disorders yes uh, yeah, yeah absolutely so now uh, since we talked about you know uh, a typical term in attention deficit hypersensitivity disorder now uh, i want uh, to know about one more thing which is very overlooked because we actually talked some of the uh, steps still now which is overlooked in the kashmiri scenario the other part is the autism uh, people mm -hmm. don't know what is autism and what are its symptoms and is and how should it be treated yes when we talk about the autism uh, uh, we we talk about the autism spectrum disorder usually uh, there were many disorders in uh, in the previous diagnostic and uh, statistical and mental disorders which was the fourth edition text wise but now we have the five fifth edition now there are some changes in it 
then we have the autism spectrum uh, we, we can say this is, this is a complex condition this is a complex condition with uh, deficits in social communication or social relationship or social interaction we can say uh, where actually a children uh, uh, fails to make a uh, kind of uh, normal normal conversations in his daily life he's not able to make those back and forth conversations uh, how what the other children are actually uh, able to do so when we talk about the social communication there are always this failure of normal back and forth communications and when we talk about the social interaction uh, that's that means the he's not able to initiate or response respond to social interactions uh, sometimes those communication and interaction it it creates more problem in his daily lives because there are certain kinds of uh, uh, problems he is facing he is not able to initiate that first and then he is not able to uh, late in a later stage make a uh, full thorough communication process with the other people um, uh, at that time so then there are other problems in uh, as well like we have non verbal communications or or uh, repeated or uh, we can uh, call that a restricted behavior pro related problems there as well when you talk about the normal communications here what we see there there we, we see like a kind of an abnormal body posturing of facial expressions you might see sometimes there might be kind of a repetitive uh, kind of a things like sometimes we call them tics but that in in autism spectrum disorder we don't call them like that but uh, in uh, we can say these 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 are kind of an abnormal body posturing which uh, are, are facial expressions those which are not actually uh, uh, what he is actually saying or what he is actually uh, uh, what he is actually doing that's not uh, uh, concurrent with that so he may be talking about um, some uh, good moment of his life uh, or or he must be happy at that time if he's talking about those things but he may not show the facial expressions according to that so there might be about, about some kinds of uh, the uh, abnormal uh, body posturing as well that we have uh, like i already said that that they they might have sometimes they do uh, repeated kind of uh, uh, things like repeated kind of behaviors as well and there sometimes what happens the abnormal tune or voice is also there so uh, sometimes it's also there that by, by that symptom we can also uh, say that this children might suffer this children is uh, this child is actually suffering from a, a, an autistic disorder autism spectrum disorder or uh, one thing that's very much important whenever the these people these these uh, children who are suffering from autism spectrum disorder they talk with other people uh, there is usually a poor eye contact they don't uh, uh, have that kind of an uh, we can call it the impartial eye contact or something like that but uh, usually we use the term poor eye contact so uh, they uh, talk other with other people but they don't make direct eye contact with that person that's how the uh, how these symptoms are in, in this autism spectrum disorder so it's like uh, very much importance is given right now to this disorder because we have seen throughout the world because uh, there are some movies uh, have been made on uh, like in, in in hollywood as well as in bollywood so that uh, makes uh, ma makes uh, it possible for people to understand what this condition actually is so what we actually talked in this we talked about those kind of deficits in developing maintaining or we call that understanding relationships as well so so these how how to develop relationships how to maintain them and how to understand those relationships uh, that that remains very much uh, effective effect, uh, affected in this in this uh, autism spectrum disorder so so there are some kind of as far but, as you have yeah as far as you have talked about the anxiety or in the children mm -hmm. uh, so uh, now uh, you know we actually had a quite brief of, about this autism and uh, factors but then uh, what are the symptoms a typ uh, uh, child typically shows when the child is having the autism uh, i mean anxiety yeah 
So when we talk about anxiety disorders, you, you might see sometimes a generalized anxiety disorder, which is uh, anxiety about everything, whatever they do in, daily, in their daily lives. Uh, there, there might be those kind of uh, anxiety related to those things as well. There might be an anxiety related to the, the exam pressure. There might be anxiety related to homework as well. So uh, like, uh, like adults, whenever they suffer from any kind of anxiety disorder, they usually tell people. They, they will tell their friends, I, I, I'm anxious about this thing. I'm anxious, anxious about that thing. Or sometimes they feel depression, they tell someone. But in children, we see they actually don't know what is going on. They actually don't know what kind of emotional disturbance it is. They don't, they don't have a name to that emotional disturbance. They feel kind of uh, anxious, but they don't know this is actually the anxiety. So they, most of the time, they don't tell their parents or, 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 or their friends or teachers at school that we are suffering from kind of an anxiety or there's a problem with us. But they, what they actually do, they show those kinds of behaviors. They show those kinds of behaviors while we can actually get know about those things that he's actually suffering from anxiety disorder. The behaviors usually they may might be irritable most of the time. Mm, and they, they they cannot uh, sit most of the time uh, on one place. Uh, they may be kind of there might be kind of a rest, restlessness as well. There might be kind of mood uh, effects as well on the uh, uh, on the children in, in in their daily lives. So mood change. There may might be like um, uh, sleepless nights as well. There might be problems with the appetite as well. So there might be other physical symptoms where they can say that. Uh, that like uh, heart is racing fast or something like that, palpitation is there, or some uh, other, they are not interested in academics. Uh, and in later stage, when we talk about that, the they fa falling grades may be because of the depression or anxiety as well. So these symptoms, these signs, they show about uh, their anxiety through their behaviors that should be noted and that should be taken care of. Yeah, in the recent uh, uh, article, actually, this was another study. It was an article published in newspaper, which which stated that there were 300 uh, child mental health cases reported uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. Actually, we can take it back to the August time and when the actually the restrictions started in Kashmir. Uh, so th there there are there are typical cases of uh, obsession in the ch uh, children, especially. Uh, which is actually, you know, kind of, uh, if you can, you can highlight that uh, related to the anxiety and other things. So what, what are the important factors a children should actually, I mean, the, the teenager should consider and the parents should be thinking in this time of pandemic for children's. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this, this is most important thing. And I actually wanted to talk about this thing as well, because we have seen lots of children coming with the complaints of uh, men, uh, complaints related to mental health issues. Uh, because uh, what happened, situation have drastically changed. The routine lives drastically, cha drastically changed um, um, because there was a proper timetable for going to school. There was a proper timetable uh, to do certain kind of things. Everything got affected. So, uh, so it's very much important that we should make again that structured kind of an environment for those children. If that uh, environment is not structured, uh, they, if they are not uh, attending like classes at home, or they, if they are, they are just there. There's a day out for them, and they are not doing anything uh, during the day uh, related to the studies or something or playing effectively. So that will create more problems in later stage. How to keep a structure in our daily routine uh, as a parent for for our children is most important when we talk about children's mental health in the present circumstances, because what happened uh, what happened that suddenly uh, these children uh, are uh, are now at home uh, uh, taking lessons from anyone. That's uh, every everyone is teacher for them right now. Uh, if his uncle at home. He's also trying to teach them if their parents, he's also trying, they are also trying to teach them because they feel that uh, it's not good for them to stay uh, idle at home or something like that. So uh, for children, it's a kind of pressurized environment. Wherever they go, they feel that they are, um, they are being harassed, they are being pressurized for studies or something like that. But we should know about how to deal with these kinds of things. So uh, th this was a sudden kind of a change in our daily routine that every everyone became a teacher 
uh, for, for their children. So uh, for, for parents, it's also stressful sometimes because, for example, uh, uh, they, are now, they are now facing uh, with their children like they are what, what actually they have studied uh, at their own time. It's a totally different scenario right now, totally different syllabus for them. And they need to actually uh, see it before, uh, taking, uh, before taking classes for their children as well. So there are some basic, uh, basic things which we, we, we should know about. Uh, it has been researched, researched a lot um, since many decades that how we can actually create a kind of stress hardiness in our, in our, in our children. There are, uh, uh, there are uh, three main things, three, we call them three C's. That's the most important thing we should know. So the first C, uh, C is, uh, that's the control. So control uh, and the second C is the commitment and third C is challenge. So the control is the most important thing that like dealing with, uh, dealing with children, uh, the challenging situations, one of the first things we, we uh, wanna do is take note of what do we have control over. We should, we should know about that thing. If we have control on certain areas of our child, if we have control on certain areas, certain aspects, then we should know them first. We should take care of them at a later stage, but we should know how we can actually control the, those, those conditions, those areas as well. Uh, the, uh, at present, we don't have control over schools. We don't. We, we don't. We don't know how to uh, how how they are going again to school, or when they are opening, uh, or 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 getting, or maybe getting out for for hobbies, for uh, for sports, or something like that. But we do have control how to structure our day. That's the most important thing we should know. So uh, structuring uh, a whole day for for a child is most important you should make uh, child aware about things that we we can control the day and we can have a progressive day out we can have a productive day but we need to take these these things into consideration so these are the things that we can make our ch our children uh, actually uh, aware about this thing that what's happening right now what 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 kind of uh, what kind of challenging situations we are facing day to day, in our day to day lives right now because of the covid so we can actually take uh, with, with we can actually discuss with them and we can actually take help of other people as well to make the structured day programs for uh, for our children that was the first c they, that about the control so when we talk about the challenge Now, when we say ourselves that there is a problem, when we say ourselves there is a problem, it seems that that there is a big problem. It's it's kind of how you take that problem in, uh, into your mind, how 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 you are able to deal with those kinds that that kinds that kind of problem with your own thoughts. So if you if you say yourselves that there is a problem, it seems to us that that problem is too big for us, but uh, what we should know about that, we really can't do anything. We, we, we say sometimes about uh, if we think that the problem is big, we really can't do anything about that. But if something is like framed as a challenge, we say ourselves that this is actually a challenge for us. We need to tackle that. We need to solve that problem. So it, it becomes easy for us. It actually gives us a meaning that we can do something about it. Uh, the, the previous situation was like uh, that this is a big problem. If you think like this, that this is a big problem. Uh, so it, it creates more uh, thoughts like kind of a negative, pessimistic thoughts about that problem. And we are, we, are, we are not actually dealing with that problem in the right way. So if we are framing that as a challenge, that problem, so that's, that's actually how it uh, gives a kind of a meaning meaning that we can do something about that problem. So this is a challenge, second point. And the third C is the commitment. So we should know that what actually we are truly committed to. Actually, what happens in our daily life during this coronavirus stage, COVID-19 stage, is that the, there's a lot of role shifting in our families. There is a lot of uh, different areas we need to take care of. We need to, we are, parents are very much anxious about what's happening around. 
uh, we we are too much busy with the with the uh, media when getting the news what happened what's happening and what so there should be a certain area where our commitment should be we should know about that uh, how to structure our lives how to structure our day for the children how to uh, make them uh, feel good at home but predictive as well but we should have certain areas where need we need to emphasize and we need to have committed attitude towards that that area so so there are certain uh, problems in in uh, in children that need to be addressed in the, this time as well and the one more c is there there are three but one more c is that the connection as well that we should how to make actually ourselves again connected with people around us that's very much important right now so we we, we need to keep social distancing we need to keep all those things in mind but uh, but one of the important we, we we should not keep ourselves away from people we should not stay totally indoors because that's that's one of the important things that making connection with other people is most important during this time so uh, making uh, keep keeping children connected with parents keeping children connected with friends keeping children connected with relatives or, or teachers at school that's most important at this time so we should know we should know about how to uh, as, as a parent now there are certain kinds of things that we should take care of like uh, uh, how to care for self and others parents should know that how to care for self and how to care for uh, children as well uh, uh, th then there should be a kind of uh, how to parents should uh, know that how to develop a kind of trustworthy relationship with with, with children so these uh, at, at present when your child is totally indoors with you throughout the day uh, 24 and 7 then you you should take care of their mental health as well you should make a kind of structured environment at home you should keep uh, actually uh, them connected with other people there must be those challenges that, that challenge which those challenges which are actually they are facing in their daily lives that must be addressed that must be solved and that the, the, the uh, importance of solving the challenge in their daily life should be should be taught to the taught to our children. That's important. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, as far as now, uh, so if we actually talked in particular scenario. Now I want it to be more specific in terms of the trauma which some of many of us, I think almost everyone is uh, has faced one or the other uh, kind of trauma. So uh, children actually see different types of traumas. In the in the, in the in the Kashmir scenario, so what uh, exactly should a parent because he's actually in that trauma also, but what actually should a, uh, a parent do uh, uh, to you know to kind of take him away from this type of trauma which he sees outside? Uh, this this is the important question when we talk about the Kashmir scenario. Because uh, we have seen um, num numberless uh, like post-traumatic stress disorder children who have actually seen kind of traumatic witness traumatic event and those who are re experiencing them in their uh, daily lives. So that that uh, that's important. That should that 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 needs to be addressed actually. But here, when we talk about the trauma. Uh, the major role is of a of a uh, professional mental health professional who actually deals with with the children so uh, uh, there are certain kinds of uh, actually uh, therapies we, we involve uh, children with them uh, and and uh, we actually talk about those traumatic events uh, we actually uh, uh, see the pros and cons of those traumatic events as well we actually make them sure how to deal in daily lives how it affects their daily life and how it affects their uh, mind uh, at the cognitive and emotional level as well but when we talk about the how how when we talk about how how these uh, uh, parents can actually assist children in dealing with that trauma. It's 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 most important that parents should be educated about how to deal with children, uh, children when they are they have suffered a kind of traumatic event. So when whenever there is a kind of re-experience of that traumatic event, patient uh, parents are parents are actually the first responders to that traumatic event. So uh, whenever parents sees those cues because every behavior every problematic behavior has a cue so if there's a kind of, there's a kind of a cue for that traumatic event for that re-experiencing of that traumatic event 
parents should come close to children and they should if if the child is able to talk with them they should keep talking with the children as well because that's most important keeping uh, parents can all uh, only do this thing very nicely that they can distract the mind of of a child um, as soon as possible uh, because whenever those cues are activated in the mind in the brain actually uh, how actually those traumatic re experiencing when that happens so uh, what happens uh, that uh, we if we are able to actually distract the mind of an uh, of a, ch a child at that time uh, that that may be beneficial as well so but talking about that traumatic event sometimes we have seen in some cases that's beneficial and some cases it it were uh, it may was the situation as well because keeping reminding of because when we talk when we more and more talk desensitize your mind when we desensitize the children's mind who's actually suffered that traumatic event uh, you actually talk more and more about that 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 that's actually a particular uh, technique we call the systematic desensitization so uh, you actually talk more and more about that that traumatic event and that actually mind gets desensitized about that traumatic event but sometimes it uh, we have seen in some uh, children or some other adults as well that these uh, this systematic desensitization creates more problems sometimes so it's very much important that parents should know about this thing that how to deal with that so uh, psycho educating parents about that thing uh, keeping um, uh, children reassured about those traumatic events that nothing bad will happen it is just a uh, reminder of those uh, re experiencing of those traumatic events and creating a supportive kind of environment most important thing so when you create a supportive environment around your child uh, that is most important uh, when we deal with the post traumatic stress disorder besides other uh, professionals uh, those who are dealing with 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 the kind of techniques like emdr is there like we have <coughs> we have somatic desensitization we 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 do something at cognitive level as well so uh, besides those other things the parents should be psychoeducated about that they know what what is actually how the symptoms arise how to deal with them how to desensitize uh, the condition at that moment when whenever he is re experiencing re experiencing those traumatic events and they should create a supportive kind of environment around that children as well that's uh, and and keeping them reassured that nothing bad will happen there should be a connection between parents and uh, and, and and children as well at that time yeah there's a very uh, uh, important question which is actually you know uh, you know very close to me is because of the fact that uh recently we saw that uh, there was uh, a person who was lying on the road uh, he uh, is my uncle he was my uncle and uh, his you know grandson was on his chest and then uh, when i you know when i listen the stories from the parents and they say that the child is making a certain type of uh, repetitions where he sometimes wakes up uh, after the sleep and he you know tries to repeat that incident himself secondly uh, what he does is at certain point of time if if he is asked to go out so he says he he is not willing to do it so he has a kind of trauma in his mind so uh, what are the specific suggestions which you actually uh, will give to the parents of the child yeah see uh, this important thing that we have that unfortunate incident happened um, i think a few weeks back it was really unfortunate that that happened at that moment but uh, it's it's our i think it's our day to day life here in kashmir valley uh, some incidents actually uh, come into the media and some are not so uh, so how to actually uh, deal with that kind of a child when he is actually suffering from that kind of a problem so uh, that re experience of traumatic or oh, there is kind of a fear a kind of a fear in his mind uh, uh, that uh, that actually um, bring many thoughts into his mind that if i am going out uh, i may met a same fate what 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 my uncle had met or something there there might be other fears as well in his mind uh, so he might be like uh, distancing himself when he saw any kind of that uniformed man around his house or something like that so uh, so there are many kinds of behaviors he may exhibit but uh, dealing with that child uh, at at home uh, when if he's he's uh, if he's actually uh, 
uh, if there are more problems in his daily lives then you must uh, take him to a professional that's most important thing but if he's showing minor symptoms then it's possible that you can actually distract his mind when whenever he's actually uh, saying about those kinds of things and it's better if we uh, some may, maybe some people have uh, told you about that it's not possible to talk about that event forget about that don't talk about that but sometimes it is beneficial when we more talk about the event that happened a traumatic event that happened in past it actually desensitizes your mind but there should be a way of doing that there should be a there, there should be a, a kind of actually a professional can do it in a, in a more uh, more a, a nice way you can say that so uh, dealing with this kind of a children is very much important then you should take him out you should not listen him when he's not able to take him that when he's not he's not actually ready to go out or something like that you should motivate him you should uh, tell him that uh, we will go somewhere or we will uh, that's actually what we are doing in our daily lives that we distract we want to distract the minds of our children who are actually suffering from any kind of uh, suffered any kind of traumatic event so that's important but if he's uh, actually showing less interest in academics or if he's actually less talking with other people if he's uh, disturbed kind of showing exhibiting the kind of disturbed behaviors in his daily life then there must be a professional help that we should need for that child. so it's uh, for everyone every children who is actually uh, actually uh, showing these kinds of symptoms or who is actually suffer that kind of traumatic event who actually witness and one more one more important thing is here that it's not only that you directly witness that event it has seen that many researchers have actually uh, studied this phenomenon that uh, there is more effect of trauma if you see the kind of video or in media or in news about those traumatic events what whatever happened then the one who is actually directly witnessing that and that traumatic event so it's actually we should not show those traumatic video or image to our children as well because that keeps recurring in their thoughts in their mind and that makes them like kind of hyper arousal is always there Uh, they they sometimes are restless because of that they lose their appetite because their thoughts are uh, recurring about about those event those traumatic events as well so it's important that we should not only uh, care about that we sh- the children should not witness directly that trauma we should take care of these things as well that children should not involve themselves seeing those traumatic videos as well or in news or media or some electronic or print media as well so that needs to be taken care of so at last i'll uh, point out one more important thing which actually happens in a uh, uh, kashmiri scenario is comparing the children with others which is like an emotional maltreatment for the children when they you know in, in terms of studies in terms of sports is very rarely but especially in terms of studies they are compared and this actually creates sort of you know a trauma as well as anxiety in so what what is what is what is wrong where is where are we wrong in this scenario so what i have heard actually question about the comparing children with other children uh, in studies because there was some problem with the audio at that time so when we talk about this thing that when we when we compare uh, our children with other children we actually give them kind of a reason to think about themselves but sometimes it's motivational sometimes it's problematic as well so if uh, see when we see someone excelling in, in in their lives in in studies or some other areas of their life like in supports supports huh? so we actually sometimes are so much motivated to to follow the footsteps to to become kind of we 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 make them our role models like that so it's it's important that there should be a balance in doing that Uh, comparing uh, our children with other children those who are excelling in studies or sports or something or any any other field uh, so it's very important that we should know how to balance that as well it's good that we are giving them mm, the reason to think about how to deal with your how to go in with your future how to deal with this kind of a thing if you are not able to make um, uh, yourselves if you are not able to make yourself uh, at par with other children but how you can actually motivate yourself to do that to go with the future to go uh, to achieve more and more in your life 
so it it it's related to the studies as well as it's related in the, uh, related in, in in supports field as well so we should know about how to make a balance in that because sometimes it's very much beneficial motivational as well and sometimes it creates more problem when actually uh, actually a, ch a child is not able to follow that when actually child is not able to make himself uh, more motivated about to 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 excel in studies or to excel in supports or in any other in, in other areas as well i i must say you one example here i had a patient few years back who uh, a child actually who was uh, some uh, 12 13 years old and uh, he was uh, he was like uh, very much like what we call that attention deficit and hyperactive he was very much hyperactive in his daily lives he was creating more problems for parents teachers and his uh, classmates in school so when when he came uh, to us for the evaluation actually detailed evaluation we have done a detailed evaluation we have we have done some neuropsychological assessments as well and we have done other kind of uh, personality assessment as well but one thing what we have done at the end that was the we we we, we actually we did a comprehensive interest schedule that's actually a kind of uh, how you can uh, see why the where the child is interested in which area he is more focused in his daily life where he's he has developed his interest so we came to know that he's very much active and 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 he's which very much interested in in sports and the, and the most important game in the supports was the table dance for him so that kind of her, hyperactivity which was actually there uh, we 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 tried to channelize that that hyperactivity that that aggression towards in his daily life that uh, we we channel try to channelize with the help of teachers with the help of sports coach and within five or six months he was one of the best players in his in his in his school so uh, after um, five six months again he actually uh, played uh, uh, from a uh, from a uh, school team uh, at a district level and then again what we saw that was really uh, good to see at that level he actually uh, played at state level as well so there was a kind of that channelizing that energy that's most important thing when we talk about these hyperactive behaviors or those kind of behaviors which actually so keeping view the uh, keeping in view the interest of the hobby of the child that's very much important we should not force any kind of our own decisions on the child that you should have to go this way not that way because he's interested in that way but we are interested in something else so as a parent we should know that the child where he actually wants to go we should uh, we should uh, actually motivate him to pursue that career we should motivate him to go in that way go in that area not the area which actually parents are liking to go in so that's important thing uh yes i think uh, we are actually uh, short of time because i am not sure we can take much more questions after that but then there are a few questions which are very important yeah. which khalid will be uh, asking you so yeah. uh, i thank you before handing over uh, to khalid for giving such an uh, interesting you know uh, it's it's a very uh, important for kashmiri scenario where uh, every children every uh, you know uh, parent needs to kind of listen to all this thing uh, i thank you again uh, mr uh, akmal shah saab uh, for sparing time with us for sparing time with jk scientist i on the behalf of jk scientist thank you and uh, i hand over to um, dr khalid dr khalid thank please. you thank you thank you sir. thank you so much akmal saab and jamil saab we have few questions uh, akmal saab i will be just uh, asking those questions uh, one of the questions is that how important is uh, communication uh, between a kid and his parents important in maintaining the mental health yes yes when we when we talk about the communication we have actually communication disorders but when we talk about the diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders we have actually a separate category of communication disorders uh, but uh, in context of how communication is important with parents between parents and children that's that's of the utmost importance when we when we talk, talk about that communication <coughs> sometimes what we see in our in our families when when parents are uh, they are they are stressed out of the day uh, during his work or something else but they when they came back they actually 
behave with their children like um, they have come from outside and they, they have no time for their children they have no time to communicate with their children or something like that so that's very much important we should know about that child actually those who are um, uh, very much less of age they they don't know what they are doing what they are actually what they are going out for sometimes because they don't know what actual life is so they are actually throughout the day they actually wait for their parents to come back and they will talk with us but if you are if if as a parent you are coming back to home but you are not even communicating with your with your children that creates more problems and that's the only that's the only problem which create later uh, um, uh, this child makes uh, makes a kind of distance from other people as well he's not get he he is not able to get involved with other people at school with friends or teachers or with relatives because actually those who are actually near to him if they are not making that communication possible that will later that, that affects later stage of his life as well so the communication between parents and child is very much important especially when child is suffering from any kind of mental health issues yes okay, uh, we have another question that are there any reliable online uh, counselors uh, specifically for kids uh, in 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 the valley since it's very difficult for people to go for personal consultations are there any reliable online counselors yeah. there are there are certain like uh, organizations who actually work in this area we have institute of mental health and neurosciences uh, like in srinagar uh they, they are actually available on phone because of the covid they have actually circulated their phone numbers throughout uh, the uh, like social media and other uh, platforms and um, uh, that's they are actually available i know some of my friends who are there they actually do on phone counseling with uh, children as well as with uh, adults as well as with other uh, like older age people as well so there are other organizations you might know about the msf that's doctors without borders they have actually made a country wide uh, actually a phone number is their toll free number they have also circulated uh, throughout the social media and they are available 24 into 7 for online counseling that might, it might be for children for adults for old age any any person can talk to them they have experienced in qualified clinical psychologists and counselors available now uh, you can you can check their website and you can get know about the number as well. uh we also have one of uh, a question that uh, kids are getting more and more addicted to mobile phones uh it's not it's not only because of the pandemic or because of uh, the lockdown uh, so uh, how can parents uh, i mean counsel their kids uh, about uh, not using uh, these mobile phones for a longer period of time and also uh, a similar question of its kind that Uh, most of our kids are uh, getting addicted uh, using uh, by playing online games for instance pubg so it's creating a sense of a, a, a sense of a, let's say uh, kind of a problematic feeling in kids also and parents are all parents are also feeling you know, we we have seen uh, we have seen different um, we have seen very much uh, high level of cases in other parts of uh, country as well in our state it's also we have we have seen so many cases related to the video games pubg and and we have heard about many suicides related to that as well so uh, when we talk about the uh, uh, the excessive amount of time spending on this social networks or uh, using mobile with video games or something like that we must say we must think about this thing that children have a power of imitation i have seen many many parents those who every time scold their children those every time who became aggressive towards their children why you are using, using so much this mobile why you are playing so much games on this mobile you are spending whole time but when it comes to their turn they are actually spending a lot of time with uh, with with this social networking and all those things so it's like children have power of imitation strong power of imitation they imitate what their what their parents do but sometimes cases are different even if parents are not doing that but sometimes children are addicted to that as well but if i again i again come to that structured way of that activity scheduling for the day you you must parents should take care of children 
they should give them they should, it's not like they should snatch phones and they should not that may they will that will make anxious uh, uh, that will make children anxious but when we talk about that how we deal with this kind of a th there must be a communication between parents and children there must be a kind of uh, discussion about that how much time should be spent and how much time should be spent on other activities like studies and other kinds of supports and how much that is important there should be a kind of discussion about that and after that discussion there should be a kind of activity scheduling program for that so if you have a kind of activity scheduling throughout the day how to deal with that so if you are going about there's a time for prayers there's a time for meals there's a time for study there's a time for mobile as well so it gets like kind of there's a kind of uh, kind of smooth day-to-day uh, -day life uh, going on and that that might uh, that might create less problems for for those children and parents as well but one of the most important thing which i want to again talk here about that is that the power of imitation is the most important thing parents should know that how much they use mobiles as well that that's important Okay, so one one more question is that uh, how do we differentiate between normal and abnormal behaviors in children, and uh, are abnormality and creativity uh, related to each other? Yeah, that's actually the interesting question, a kind of philosophical one. You can say that there is no there is no line what's abnormal between what's normal and what's abnormal. There is no line on that. But the one important thing is there that if a child or for that means anyone who is suffering from psychological problems, if, if the daily life of that person or child is affected by this condition, this psychological problem or the behavior he is doing, that the social occupational dysfunction if there is this kind of social occupational dysfunction if he's not able to go out to meet with friends if he's not able to study if he's not able to do something uh, that's very much important if the effect is in his social occupational functioning then we say that this person this child or this person needs a kind of a treatment that is the only line between differentiating normal and abnormal because scientifically we don't have any kind anything any line between what's normal and what's abnormal because it changes with the culture it changes with the societal normals it changes with with uh, the the kind of um, you can say the environment you are living in so the one thing you should take care of that is that that if the social social occupational functioning is actually getting deteriorated that getting getting actually problematic day by day then we need a treatment we need to see that behavior as a problematic behavior okay uh, i think uh, there are a few more questions but most of them have been taken uh, care of in your uh, talk so uh, i I, uh, I think we can wind up this session now we are already having one and a half hour and uh, we, 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 we thank you for giving us uh, your precious time uh, Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Akmal Saha, for being uh, with us today. And uh, it has indeed been a, a great uh, pleasure to hear you. Uh, and on one of the most important topics, uh, which is actually uh, ch child uh, care related to uh, this, uh, ch children. And uh, uh, I would also like to thank uh, organizers or on behalf of JK Scientists, which include uh, uh, Asif Bakshi. Uh, Dr. Zahoor, uh, Dr. Jamil, and uh, Saima Beg. Uh, I also would especially thank uh, Dr. Jamil for uh, moderating this session and uh, to our audience who has been with us on uh, Zoom platform and on Facebook. Uh, if you have any questions related to this session or if you have any questions related to our summer outreach 2020, <laughs> sorry, please feel free to contact us on our email or write to us on, on our Facebook page uh, as well. And specifically to those parents uh, who, who, who may not have joined us today or those who have joined us today, if you have any more questions uh, uh, related to your uh, kids, please feel free to contact us and we will pass on those questions to Akmal Sahab as well. Thank you once again, yes. Akmal Sahab, for joining us. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks for inviting. Thank you. Thank you all organizers and JK scientists. Have you, have you with us. Thank you so much. So uh, with this, uh, we are winding up today's session on uh, child uh, mental health.
thank you so much for joining us on Facebook and thank you so much for joining us on Zoom as well. Thank you so much.